Okay, so <laughs> we're going off to just check if everything's place in place. Uh, tomorrow is the Trans European Trail across Wales. Well, what I'm doing is I'm meeting up with the other guys on the Welsh border. Look at this wire here. We're, I'm meeting up with the other guys on the Welsh border. Um, and I'm setting off early tomorrow morning to get 250 kilometres of tetting before I meet with them on my own with all this weight, which is a little bit unnerving. I can't put this down now. In case it falls down, I can't see where I'm going. So, just off to get fuel and do a last minute test of my bits and bobs of kit. I've been having a lot of trouble with this uh, Session 5 GoPro thing. It's, um, it's got something called quick capture, which is uh, where you just press the button and it turns itself on and starts recording all in one go, which is excellent, except that uh, when you try and do it with a microphone, it doesn't pick up the audio. So what you have to do is turn it on and then unplug the microphone for a few seconds and plug that in. All right, we've got the little boys, the little bikes. This, this is my village and the Trans-European Trail goes through this village and as I say it's 250 miles from, uh, from here all the way to the Welsh border. I reckon I can get about 200 miles done tomorrow if I set off early. So I'm hoping for 100 in the morning, 100 in the afternoon. The weather's going to be nice. And then, the, then camp somewhere near Compton or Sandbatch is it called? Something like that. I don't know. Crew. Somewhere around there. Um, so I'll get through the Peak District, get out the other side, I'll find somewhere to camp, which will be a bit challenging when I'm in farmland and not, not up in the hills. Um, so the people that are going, I believe, are Chris, who's uh, Chris, Chris Hill, Chris Molio Hill on Facebook, who's running the whole thing. We've got um, somebody called Katie Lou on Facebook, I don't know who she is, a friend of Chris's, I think, who is in the Fire Brigade uh, with him. And then uh, Matt, who uh, who's just one of the other, just another guy who I've been riding with before, and he's the guy I think who broke his ribs when he came off, punched the lung and stuff when he came off on a on one of the runs. So I'm guessing we're going to be taking it a bit easy. Oh, this is lovely this weather. What temperature are we on? 27, and the Himalayan always reach about three degrees high, so it's about 24. It's going to be hot today. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. I say hot, that's what country you're in I suppose. Hottest I've ever been. <laughs> I was uh, riding across the outback of Australia with a girl called Emma on the back and we decided to get out and go for a bit of a, uh, I think it was about three mile, maybe three kilometre hike through over uh, some hills um, and just have a look at the view. And, um, and when we got into town later on, we found out that it had been 52 that day. 52, I mean, that's not, that's like, Oh, I don't know, would you struggle to get in a bath at 52? That's hot, man. Right, what we got? What we got to talk about? Okay, down here we've got the old faithful water, and this one's ready for fuel if I need it. Got, got my bag with my valuables in, my cameras, and all that kind of stuff. And stuff that I don't want to get wet in there. Some stuff that I don't want to get wet is in a waterproof bag. Um, brought a bit more vlogging gear this time. Uh, to save space, I don't know if you can see it, I've got on the back there, um, I've got, um, my, I've put my sleeping bag on the outside because I figured it doesn't weigh much, I'll put it on uh, high up, and I've got my, um, what else, um, oh yeah, my, my water shoes I've put on the outside just to save space as well because they, they don't weigh much. I've stuck in a ratchet strap, some elastic, some, stri some sort of ropey stuff. I've got all sorts of crap that I'll probably never need, but it's just the sort of stuff that I think I might need. Uh, probably overdone it on kit. It's easily done. I've tried to think everything through and think, will I really, really need this? But And, and I won't. I won't need most of it, certainly on a five-day trip. Um, but like I've mentioned before, it's all planning for eventually taking a bike, either this bike or a similar bike, around the world. 
you rev me round. Right, I'm a bit worried with all the weight on the back because my experience tells me that if you're going up a steep hill and you hit a rock with your front wheel, it's difficult keeping that front wheel down with all that weight at the back. I'll have to, just if I see a big rock coming, get my weight right forward. Also experimenting with this, um, it's a very cheap GoPro thing which I played around with. I had it apart last night trying to adjust the focal length because um, it really just focused on oh, it just focused on stuff that was about two or three feet from the camera and everything else was out of focus and so now I think nothing's in focus properly but it's better than it was Right, what price are we on at the moment? 178.9, that's not cheap. But it's managed to get it for 165 in Ireland. Right, well, let's hope everything's working. So yeah, Trans-European Trail, I'm a bit nervous about a couple of things. There's, um, uh, probably want to shut this guy if I'm going to talk. I will try it, see what happens. A bit nervous about a couple of things. Number one I'm nervous about is, um, number one I'm worried about is going up uh, Pindale with all this luggage, but that's because the first time I ever went off-roading I went to Pindale and gave up, but that was my first time ever, so it's probably doable now. Ooh, back end's going to be flying around all over the place though, isn't it? Um, all right, I'll just follow the rules. And the other is uh, three showers, which I've heard a few people say is uh, pretty technical and hectic. So we'll see if uh, if they're terrible, I'll turn around and go back, or just waddle. <laughs> My aim is to get through more than it is to do serious skills and exciting riding. Um, we'll see. Oh, this seat's comfortable. I've uh, managed to get a piece of foam off the art department that they didn't need anymore shove that under there and it's beautiful comfy. I put memory foam in but that was just too soft and it ended up being more painful. We'll see what this is like after I've been in the seat for a couple of hours I suppose but on these short journeys it feels great.